Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this channel ad-free. Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike. Today we're taking a look at this ink. This is Dominant Industry number 109. Earl Grey Tea, which is one of their standard inks, and you can find these all over the place now. I bought this one from, I believe, pretty sure I got this from Yoseka.com. You can find them on the interwebs. And uh, do not use, uh, don't drink the ink. Don't let children use this. Don't expose it to direct sunlight or boil it or whatever. So, uh, you know, dominant industry. <laughs> Comes in this bottle, which is a really fun little bottle. It is 25 mils, so not the biggest bottle on earth. And it's not the cheapest ink. The prices vary wildly by region on this stuff. I've seen the standard line go from anywhere between $8 and like uh, $15, $20. Like this, the, the prices are all over the place. So do shop around uh, for this ink. Comes in this nice little like round bottomed bottle. Doesn't really fall over unless you give it a real like, you can poke it real good and it'll fall over. But otherwise, a little weebly but doesn't fall over, so that's kind of cool. Also comes with like a little uh, eyedropper pipette thing. It's uh, it's really neat, and I like these bottles a lot. I think they're cute. Okay, let's look at this on some paper. There we go. Dominant Industry Earl Grey Tea, and uh, yeah, this is orange. This is uh, kind of a burnt orange ink, and it's not what I think of when I think of Earl Grey Tea, but perhaps this comes from a couple of different places. The first is that sometimes tea just has this like sort of reddish orange color to it, and I, my, my teacups aren't white or transparent, and so I just miss it. And the other thing is that Earl Grey tea is made special by the Earl Grey, uh, by the, um, the bergamot oil that comes from the bergamot orange, which is like this weird little fruit that's related to a couple of different fruits, it seems like. So, uh, that's, uh, that's an orange too. Maybe that's where this came from. I'm not really sure. So, this is my favorite kind of tea, and, uh, so I had to grab this bottle of ink because, uh, you know, Earl Grey. It's good stuff. Okay, so I've had this ink in this pen for a while. This is my Franklin Kristoff, or one of my Franklin Kristoff Model 20s, and it's an orange pen, and I'm like, I'm gonna put this orange ink in here, and it has a broad sig nib, which is a stub italic gradient nib, which is, uh, you know, a very nice grind. It's probably my favorite grind around, really. Uh, my wife does those, but, uh, you know, I liked it before, before even then, so great grind on this thing. And you can see it has a little bit of mild shading on here. Not a ton, but definitely some. That's going to depend upon your paper as well. The flow is very medium. I haven't had any dry ups. I haven't had a hard start. I haven't had it flooding. It's not just like soaking through every paper it sees. It's uh, well controlled, very medium, uh, and behaves really well on copy paper as well. This is my uh, 20, uh, 20 pound, 30% recycled staples copy paper, which is the bad stuff in your office copier. And you can see they're really, even with a broad uh, stub nib, there's not, <laughs> there's not a feather. Well, maybe there's a feather in the T of staples, maybe. I'm being extremely picky and looking at it way up close, but look at that performance on copy paper. A couple little dots showing through, but that is really impressive for this terrible copy paper. So well done, Dominant Industry, on this. And it's not even a, a dry ink. This one's a little bit on the dry side and also didn't have any real problems, but this one's not dry and it's uh, it was great. So very cool. Okay. Uh, now, down here in this, uh, this commentary, you can see where the, uh, the shading and all that sort of thing happens. And... <laughs> What happened here was I just swiped my hand across it before uh, before it dried. It did uh, take a little bit of time to dry on this Rhodia paper, but that's not unusual at all. So there you go. All right, let's do a little bit of water test. We'll uh, look at some chromatography, we'll look at some similar inks. I've got a bunch of those. We'll look at uh, uh, some different papers. You know the drill. You can definitely see some orange moving already. Not a surprise. You don't really get water resistant oranges in most cases. So I'm interested to see what is left over when we blot this away. <laughs> look how look how orange it is. All right. <coughs> All right. So a lot of orange came up, and not a lot of orange remained. Uh, if you spill your glass of water on this ink, you will uh, lose most of it. It's it's mostly gone. You might be able to recover what you wrote, but it's going to be a close one. So yeah, no water resistance, and that is not a surprise. Here's the chromatography for this ink, and it is just what's in this ink. There's orange in there, yo. There's not a whole lot else. Maybe a tiny bit of like bright pink just around these edges right here. That's interesting, but almost nothing. A bare stain remains down here where it started, and it's kind of kept traveling as far as the water would push it. So there you go. That's that. Okay. A few other papers. 
Uh, firstly, I have it on a Notco note card. This is, uh, I was just doing some lyrics the other day just for some handwriting practice to get my, get my hands back into the practice of writing after being sick for a couple of weeks. So, and as you can see, this actually looks great on this paper. It uh, stands out, it is bold, and it uh, doesn't have any feathers or bleeds or anything like that. This is, this is really good. These note cards are not perfect for fountain pens, although they are quite good, but this ink, this ink took it very, very well. So, very nice. A little spring day from BTS. Next, we have a Tomoe River ink journal. So I've had this in here long enough that I was still using this. I've actually had it in this pen, wow, since November last year. I have refilled it a few times because I really like using it. I'm finally getting around to, uh, to reviewing it, but you can see here, it's got that beautiful burnt orange color here and it looks really nice on Rhodia. And there. Then uh, next up, we have an Inky Fingers currently ink journal. This is wheat straw paper. And uh, here you go. It does look, I think, better on here than it does on the on the um, uh, the Tomoe River because it just sort of, I don't know, it looks darker and bolder. I think it's uh, soaked in a bit more, and so it's got a better character to it. I, I like it a little bit better here than I do on there. So, yeah, looks nice, though. And, of course, no problems with bleed through or anything on these papers. These are very fountain pen friendly. Now let's look at some similarities. We've got a uh, Colo Dex card here. I did indeed pick this up from Yoseka. Good remembering Mike. <coughs> So, this is uh, the Colodex card, as I said, you can find these at wellappointeddesk.com and lots of other vendors. They are great and made by my friend Anna. Here's Ferris Wheel Press's Pumpkin Patch, which is fairly close, although it has more of a red component than Earl Grey Tea does. Thanks very much for this sample, Ruth. Then I have uh, Pen Addict's Fire on Fire from Robert Oster here, and this is very close. I think this skews more red as well. Uh, and also this ink is a little bit drier, so if you'd like something kind of in this realm, but more fiery and a little bit drier, get that fire on fire. Uh, this is uh, Groff from Faber-Castell Burned Orange, which I think is actually very close. Uh, these are very, very close colors, and I really like Burned Orange. Thanks for the sample, or for the bottle, actually, there, Don. This is a great ink as well. And then uh, Monteverde's L.A. Pin Show Coral, which I don't know if I've actually gotten this in a pen yet, have I? No, I don't think I have, but this is a gorgeous color. I might have to, have to try that. It's very similar, but again, just a bit more red. And then uh, lastly, another dominant industry ink, just to show these two next to each other because they are very close. Earl Grey Tea and industry, rather dominant industry maple uh, are very close and yet uh, definitely not the same color. This takes on more of a red cast to it in real life and looks a little bit more matte. It's a very interesting, you can actually see a little bit of a shine off this ink. I got to get this in a, in a pen because I haven't done that yet, but it looks really beautiful. So these two are pretty close. Do you need both of them? Probably not unless you're like me and then you'll probably end up buying both of them at some point because that's just how I roll. So uh, there you go. That's uh, Dominant Industries Earl Grey Tea. Thanks very much for watching. This is, uh, I really like these Dominant Industry inks. I'm a big fan of almost every one of them that I've tried. So, you know, give these a try when you find them in your local pen stores or your favorite online stores. They're kind of new on the scene from South Korea and uh, I dig them. All right. There you go. Thanks very much. I will see y'all in the next video. Peace out.